Welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. By watching this channel, you are accepting that. The content on this channel is intended for educational purposes only. We strive to provide valuable information to help you enhance your technical understanding. We do not condone the use of pirated software. Please respect local copyright laws and support software developers by using legitimate purchased products. All testing conducted on this channel is done in compliance with the Consumer Review Fairness Act and the United States Fair Use Act under Copyright Law, Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Act. We aim to provide honest reviews, security configuration tricks, tips, and how-tos. While we make every effort to deliver 100% tested solutions, we acknowledge that we don't know everything. If you have additional insights or corrections, please share them in the comments. Like and subscribe to keep up with the latest OS reviews and security tips. Your support helps us continue to provide valuable content. Hey guys, welcome to another Windows XP video. So I know that the XP videos seem to be fairly popular and um, this particular system is the one core API system. Now, something that I wanna point out about our one core API system is this particular one has been granted uh, we'll call it Granitified. So it has the Granite XP package, the one that I've been working on for a while now, I guess about eight months to get rolled out. So every time I want to roll that operating system change out, I find something new to add to it. And that's why it's been a continuous process and never actually released. Um, something that I did add to it recently was I reached out to the OneCore API folks to find out if it's possible for us to um, maybe combined tasks where I can maybe get him to give me the approval to allow the OneCore API as part of the package for the installation process. And the reason why is because that would give you the ability to use the functionality and the security that the Granite XP portion brings to the table without having to go and search and hunt down 15 different things from all different locations. I figured if I could package them all as one package, then you would get that option to do the install and then you could run the uh, OneCore API and then you could run the Granite package on top of that and give you functions. And you'll notice just by looking at this particular one that we have Google Chrome installed and we have Epic Games Launcher installed. So the EA software works on this system as well. Now I will be 100% transparent in saying that while the Epic Game Launcher did install, um, one of the drawbacks of it is that it still throws an error about a Xbox integration service that I still haven't figured out how to circumvent that yet, but I'm working on that. And I'm hoping between myself and maybe the guys over at that one core API uh, project there, we could figure it out because the issue that I ran into is that I couldn't install the EA Epic installer until I installed the Granite package. And the reason why is because the one core API didn't include the updated security settings or um, Windows installation files. So I needed to upgrade those files before I could actually run that Epic Game Installer. So it does work, but it did require a couple, uh, you know, the Granite package itself in order to install. So in installing that, there are some limitations. I did notice that on system boot, now it's a little slow, a little sluggish. Um, I think it's because it starts up with the system uh, services. And as a result, again, we're dealing with the two core operating system. Now, there's been questions in the comments field as to why we only have two cores. It's because Windows XP Home only came with a one core license and Windows XP Pro only came with a two core license. Now, since XP Pro is end of life, you can theoretically use the XP Pro two core license and apply it multiple times to get your multi-core. Uh, you could also use the command line logic to get multi-core. The thing to keep in mind is that you can't technically do the easy way to get multi-core if you installed the operating system on a single core processor. So if you created a virtual system and you gave the virtual system two cores during the installation process, then after you get the installed operating system up and running, you can run a command logic in it in order to get four cores or eight cores or whatever it is on XP. You just will have to jump through a variety of additional steps if you install it on a single core processor and then you decided that you wanted to add multi-core. This was something very common in the days of uh, hyper-threading when you were allowed to create a hyper-threaded, like a Pentium 4 with hyper-threading, would technically show up as two cores. So on an installation, you would have two cores on your processor configuration and XP would be licensed through the HAL a little different than it would be if it was a single core configuration. So in doing that, 
you are allowed or you're able at this point to add the additional cores to the system without making any drastic system changes. Now, if you install this on a Pentium 3 or you installed this on a Pentium 4 before the hyper-threading came out, then you only got a single core processor. And when you did the installation on that, the installer worked a little different on the license configuration on the install. And as a result, if you wanted to add multi-cores to that at a later date without having to reinstall the operating system, you had to jump through a variety of hoops. So in this video, we're gonna tackle how to add the additional cores without jumping through the additional hoops because when I created the system, I created it with two cores. So on this system, I've already made the settings changes that are required because I needed to make settings changes to add the DLL files for the DirectX controllers and drivers for the Epic Game Launcher. But if you obviously won't have that in the uh, vanilla versions of Windows XP already pre-configured. So to make that settings change, we're just gonna go to my computer and go to properties. And then we're gonna go to hardware. We're gonna go to driver signing. And you're gonna wanna make sure you have it set as ignore um, install the software anyway and don't ask for my approval. So you want to make sure that's the check that's checked because I think by default it's set to warn and prompt each time you choose an action. If you have warn and prompt and you make this settings change, they add the uh, multi-core to the configuration, you'll end up in a world of hurt. So don't do that. Make sure you make that change first to ignore. And again, keep in mind that this configuration has been used over and over and over again on VMware and VM products, um, VirtualBox, things of that nature. Uh, it does not work with Windows XP Home. If you have Home, your SOL. Um, if you have Pro, then you should be fine. If you have Media Center, as long as it's based on Pro, you should be fine. Uh, the easiest way to check that is just to go to Start and go to Run and type in gpedit.msc and hit Enter. And if it throws an error that it doesn't exist, you don't have a Pro-based operating system, and this configuration won't work, so don't even bother. Okay, so we're just going to close this out since it's already set. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your task manager and you're going to want to actually go to performance and make sure you see the two cores existing because if it only shows one core in here chances are you installed it with a single core and if you installed it with a single core and you run this command you'll probably blue screen and it won't come back up so it's always a good idea to take a backup a snapshot or something to your uh, virtual machine or even your physical machine before you run this command just because it's a there is a possibility that based on your hardware configuration, it may not work. And if it doesn't work, you will blue screen, you won't come back up. So if you have a backup, you have a snapshot, something like that, that's the way to go. Uh, obviously, if you're running like VMware uh, uh, workstation, you can just take a quick snapshot of the actual operating system so you can run this command. Okay, so the command is pretty simple. Um, it's just gonna be right here. And I will see if I can throw this in the body of the actual message so you don't have to go to the wiki to grab it, but I'll still put it in the wiki just in case it doesn't stick. Uh, and, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this. We're going to command prompt CMD. I'll paste this in here. And we'll just hit enter. We're going to see that we get a notification, the software we're installing, hardware, blah, blah, blah. We'll continue anyway. And then it's going to require a restart. Now, in the past, when I've run this, it requires two reboots. The first reboot, it'll come back up. It seems fine. You won't see the additional cores. You'll have to do a second reboot, and then you'll see the additional cores populate. Okay, guys, so we're on our second reboot now, and it just came back up. And what we'll do is we'll right-click on the Task Manager here, and we'll go to Task Manager, and here you go. You can see now we have four cores. So that's all it takes is just running that one command line, assuming you installed it with two cores to begin with, and that'll give you the ability to run four cores on Windows XP Professional. And for those that are curious, that will be included inside of the Granite XP build. It'll just be in a separate folder um, indicating that, you know, with the, uh, well, basically the details that we have gone over in this video is, you know, don't install it if you don't have already two cores pre-configured and, um, you know, use it at your own risk because it could, you know, foobar your machine. So just keep in mind that, you know, you want to have a backup or a snapshot or something before you actually run it. But as you can see on the screen, it does work. So we do have four cores. And at this point, we have 16 gigs of memory and four cores on a Windows XP machine. So, you know, it's about the equivalent of, you know, a modern machine as far as speed and performance, which should be concerned. The question is, is now that we have this change on here, does the latency that we experienced in Google Chrome for the uh, one core API resolve itself? Let's take a look. So let's launch this then. So 
So we still pin the CPU. I mean, so we don't pin as long. So I'd say it is faster than just the two cores. But keep in mind, since we are on processors now that are, you know, 24 cores or some of them are, you know, like if you have a Threadripper, it can be ridiculous. So, I mean, you could allocate all of those cores to XP and then it should absolutely fly. Um, being that, the you know, the fact that we would have multi-core support and then, you know, 16 gigs of memory on the operating system. And the OS itself is still only, you know, maybe two, three gigs in size. So it should absolutely book if you throw all the resources at it. Let's um, dig a little further into this real quick, just so I could show you some of the other stuff I've been working on with the Granite package. So one of the things that I added to this actual system on top of our Granite XP package, now keep in mind that we do have, you know, all our security updates. So there's 900 and, it's 956 Windows updates on the system right now. Um, so it has every single Windows update on it. Um, and there's, there's just a ton of stuff on here as far as, you know, uh, security uh, configuration uh, and whatnot. And then we have our one core API. So we have, we have two gigs of free space of a 20 gig hard drive. We have four gigs allocated right now for a page file. So, I mean, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're reach, reaching pretty much the ceiling of what you could put on a Windows XP system that was designed for like a 20 gig IDE drive. Uh, so obviously as this package expands and builds, um, you know, the, we, the hardware requirements are going to change, you know, so I, I probably will split this package up and, you know, put, you know, if you're on a home based original XP system, use this, whereas if you're on a, you know, uh, an enterprise system that's got modern hardware, run these packages first, run this next, and here's your build. Because, you know, looking at what we got as far as the configuration, we're going to run out of drive space if we're on a 20 gig hard drive on an IDE box for a Pentium 4. So, since I don't want to, you know, upgrade the operating system to the point where I can't still support the original hardware it was designed for, I'm kind of going to split this package out, make, you know, Granite XP for the original, like the OG version, version, and then maybe the uh, the updated version for the later Granite XP builds for people who actually want to expand and use this on a modern piece of hardware. But obviously, outside of the four core changes that'll take place inside of the Granite XP package, there's also, you know, there's the security updates and there's, uh, there's about 1,500 configuration changes at this point for the, uh, the registry and settings for just modifications. And if we go into the beta package here and explore it, we can actually go into the Granite XP tweaks folder. Um, we can go into the registry mods location and I can actually edit this. We can see there's, you, know, you could tell by the scroll size of the scroll bar that there's just a ton of configuration at this point in the system. So in this configuration, I have also obviously been building on top of it, adding these additional tweaks for like the four core processors. And I reached out to the one core API guy to see if I could get him his approval to add the one core API package to the Granite XP package. So you can install it as a one build configuration type of setup and not have to search for the files all over the place. Now, assuming I get his approval, obviously that'll be included in the package as well. Um, an additional configuration in this system at least, which I haven't added into the package yet, but I will if I get the approval for the one core API system, is the uh, Chrome modifications that would take place to allow this to run a little smoother, a little better on a Windows XP system. So these Chrome modifications, they also shut off things like um, the spyware with AI. So all the AI garbage that's included in the Windows 10 and 11 systems wouldn't be included in this package that would go into our Chrome build for our one core API setup. And then, you know, obviously also the Chrome configuration files themselves, which if you don't know already, they already exist on a, um, on a Google share, a Google drive, and the link is in the wiki for those files. So you don't have to pre-install it on a Windows 10 machine to grab those installation files. Um, but yeah, this this would give you the ability to run, you know, um, to, to set your password configuration to require secure passwords, um, to make sure spell check is turned on, at least for the English language, so you can, you know, type something out and have spell check enabled, to change your default browser to DuckDuckGo from Google.com, um, to show the home button on the screen, uh, to enable the bookmark browser thing in the bottom, uh, you know, to turn off the, uh, the, the error message, to set total limits. Um, of megabytes to 400 meg per actual tab. So that way, you know, if you have 15 million tabs open, it doesn't boat anchor your XP system. And then we also have the, uh, the, the memory allocation for the feed, which 
what that does is if you have 15 tabs open, every single tab that's not in focus doesn't run in the background and chew memory resources to keep the memory uh, availability up high on your XP system. So that's stuff that I've been working on on the Granite package on the background that I haven't obviously released. And you'll see here that we have the Steam installer on here and the Epic installer. And yes, Steam works on this system too, as does the Epic installer. Um, Steam's a little different because I still can't get the online to work. And I think it has to do a lot with the SMB1 configuration because at this point I have injected TLS 1.2 support into the XPOS, so that's no longer an issue. But I still don't have the ability to use the SMB2. That's something that I've been working towards to see if I could actually hybrid the Windows 7 configuration of SMB2 to, uh, into the actual um, XP configuration to allow XP to communicate on SB2 or SMB2. But obviously these are things that are in the, in the works, in the process. And um, I don't wanna really release a, a, a non-finished product, but at the same time, I would love to give this out to people so that way they could screw around with it too. So that way they could see what they could get to do and what to work. And if they could get things to work, I would love to add those into the, into the project. The thing is, is I don't do social media. I just don't have a social media presence or following or anything. Like I don't, I, I haven't had social media since I think MySpace, so I don't even know what to use. Um, I tried to use Reddit for a short amount of time, and honestly, I think I would have gotten banned if I stayed on that site just because, I, you know, I, I can't help myself. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, it's not that I troll people, but at the same time, if I if I go onto a site and you know somebody puts something in there that I you know think I can help them with, I was answering questions and I was getting notifications that I didn't have enough people or something that it, I, I don't know you guys would probably be able to tell me what i was doing wrong but i signed up to the account and i was answering questions and i was just getting notifications and i was going to be banned because i was answering the questions without a certain amount of like i don't know if i needed points or what i needed i don't know how that works because i, I just don't have it but i would love to set something up or where i could maybe pre-release this granite package out to a couple people who just want to test it out and then we could have a conversation on Discord or somewhere to go over what your findings are and see if there's anything that we could do to tweak things or update things or upgrade things or fix problems, things of that nature for break fix before I actually roll the package out to the general public. Um, so I don't know if there's a process I can do. I don't know if maybe I should join Twitter or X or whatever it's called at this point. Um, I tried to join the other day. I actually noticed that somebody attempted to use my own. So they, they have my tech guy one already associated to them so i you know if you see that there it's not me man i you know i'm i'm sorry guys i i just i don't do social media generally so it is what it is but i had thought maybe i could do that so we could have a conversation on there and uh, go over the granite build and you know not be blocked or banned because i know at least with the x package or twitter uh elon musk is all about freedom of speech so I, you could post whatever the heck you want in there and there's really no there's no checks and balances on things. Um, so, you know, that, that might be a helpful thing for people that are like, oh, this program or this application sucks. I mean, if you put that in the YouTube thing, you may get flagged. If you put that in Twitter, you don't get flagged. And those kind of comments actually do help me because that helps me provide better content to you or fact check or check my information. Because again, I don't know everything. So if I come across something that I think I know, and then I screw it up, and somebody points that out, then I have a chance to correct it or fix it or add the uh, the correction or fix into another video. So, you know, don't think that just because I've been doing this for 25 years, I know everything, because there's no way you could possibly know everything. Uh, but with that said, that's where we are with the Granite Package, and that's how you add multi-core support to Windows XP Service Pack 3. Thanks for watching.